Step three. Okay, determine the transaction price. This step requires the entity to determine the transaction price, which is the amount of consideration an entity expects to be entitled in the exchange of the promised good or service. This amount excludes amounts collected on behalf of a third party, for example, government tax taxes. An entity must determine the amount of consideration which uh, it expects to be entitled in order to recognize revenue. I continue? Continue, yes. The transaction price must include verb, viable or considered consideration. Valuable consideration should be estimated as either the expected value or the most likely amount. Management should use this uh, use the approach which is which it expects will best predict the amount of consideration and should be applied consistently throughout the contract. An entity can only include um, valuable consideration in the transaction price uh, to the extent that it is highly probable that the a subsequent change in estimated valuable consideration will not result in the significant revenue reversal. It is not appropriate to include all the valuable consideration in the transaction price. The entity should assess whether it should include part um, of the valuable consideration. However, this letter, this latter amount is still has to pass through, pass the revenue reversal test. Continue. Additionally, an entity should estimate the transaction price, taking into account non-cash consideration, consideration payable to customers, and the time value of money. It is a significant finance component is present. The latter is not required if the time period between the transaction of goods or services and payment is less than one year. If an entity anticipates that it may ultimately accept an amount lower than the initial premise in the contract due in the contract due to, for example, past experiences of discount given, then the revenue would be estimated at a lower amount with the co collectability of the lower amount being assessed. Subsequently, if revenue already recognized already recognized is not collectible, impairment losses should be taken to profit or loss. Yes, T. Uh, allocate the transaction price to the performance obligation in the contract. This step requires the allocation of the transaction price to the separate performance obligations. When a contract contains more than one distinct performance obligation, an entity allocates the transaction price to each distinct performance obligation on the basis of the relative standalone selling prices of the goods or services promised. This allocation is made at inception of the contract. It is not adjusted to reflect It is not adjusted to reflect subsequent changes in the standalone selling prices of those goods or services. Can I skip something? No. Uh, the best evidence of standalone selling price is the observable price of the good or service when the entity sells that good or service separately. If that is not available, an estimate is made by using an approach which maximizes the use of observable inputs. For example, expected cost plus an appropriate margin or the assessment of market price for similar goods or services adjusted for entity-specific cost and margins or in limited circumstances, a residue approach. When the transaction price includes a variable amount and discounts, consideration needs to be given as to whether these amounts relate to all or only some of the performance obligations in the contract. 
discounts and variable consideration will typically be allocated proportionally to all of the performance obligations in the contract. However, if certain conditions are met, they can be allocated to one or more separate performance obligations. As the price recognize revenue when or as the entity satisfies the performance obligation. The final step requires revenue to be recognized as each performance obligation is satisfied. An entity satisfies the performance obligation by referring by transferring control of a promised good or services or a promised good or service to the customer, which could occur over time or at a point in time. The definition of control includes the ability to prevent others from directing the use of and obtaining the benefit from the asset. Where an entity satisfies its performance obligation over time, revenue is recognized over time in line with the pattern of transfer. If an entity does not satisfy its performance obligation over time, it satisfies it at a point in time and revenue will be recognized when control is passed at that point in time. Factors which may indicate the passing of control include the, pre the present right to payment for the factors which may indicate the passing of control include the present right to payment for the asset or the customer has legal title to the asset or the entity has transferred physical possession of the asset. Okay, thank you. Now, like I said, SA read B1. Yes, please. Come and enter into a contract with the customer to sell an existing printing machine such that control of the printing machine vests with the customer in two years' time. The contract has two payment options. The customer can pay uh, $240 when the contract is signed or $300,000 um, uh, $300, in two years when the customer gains control of the printing machine. The interest rate explicit in the contract is 11.8% in order to adjust uh, for the risk involved in the delay in payment. However, time uh, incremental borrowing rate is 5%. The customer paid $240,000 on 1st December 20X4 when the contract was signed. Okay. Um, you have the requirement there. So discuss how the above two contracts should be accounted for under FRS 15. In the case of B1, the discussion should include the accounting treatment up to 30 November X6. And in the case of B2, the accounting treatment up to December 4th December X5. So we're on B1, so we just go up to December, up to November X6, which is our year end. So SA, what do you think of that? As control passed. Uh, for the first one? The first one, yes.
you have collected 240,000 from your customer, but why are you not delivering the machine now? It's because you don't have you don't have the machine now because if you had the printing machine now, you could have delivered it. So are you not Oh, you don't have it. Remember what we said in a bill and hold there should be reasons why the supplier is holding on to the goods and we gave reasons um, for you to recognize that revenue some of the reasons we gave out were that the goods should be available the buyer should be the one who is requesting you to hold the goods on their behalf. <clears throat> Maybe they don't have storage space. We also said that the, the seller should not be able to transfer the goods to someone else and the buyer should have access to the goods at any time But in this case, it's not the sell, it's not the buyer who is requesting the seller to keep the asset. And two years is such a long time for one to keep an asset after having paid. So this is a financing arrangement. So the customer is helping Tang to finance because if the customer had waited and paid for that machine after two years, the customer was going to pay 300,000. The fact that they are paying 240 now, it means there is a notional interest which has to be computed every year up to the time of uh, delivery of the asset. Is that clear? Yes. B1. Are you seeing my screen? Which should be the entity 
a break, can you? Just me. I don't think I'm fine. Oh, okay. okay, let me start from my side. An entity should use the discount rate which which would be reflected in a separate financing transaction between the entity and each customer at contract inception. The interest rate implicitly in the transaction may be different from the rate to be used to discount the cash flow, which should be the entity's incremental borrowing rate. IFRS 15 would therefore dictate that the rate which should be used in adjusting the promised consideration is 5%, which is the entity's incremental borrowing rate and not 11.8%. As the customer is paying Tang in advance, in substance, Tang is borrowing 240000 from the customer, which makes Tang's incremental borrowing rate the most appropriate rate to use. Tang would account for the significant finance component as follows. Recognize a contract liability for the 240,000 payment received on 1st December 2004 at the contract inception. During the two years from the contract inception, 1st December 2004, until the transfer of the printing machine, Tang adjusts the amount liability by recognizing 85% for two years. This results in interest of 12,000. In the year ended 30th November 2005. Contract liability would stand at 252,000, that is 240 plus the 12,000 as of 30th November 2005. Therefore, interest in the year ended 30th November 2006 would be 12,600, that is 252,000 by the 5%. This would bring the contract liability up to $264,600. Contract revenue would be recognized on the transfer of the printing machine to the customer on 30th November 2006 by debiting the contract liability and crediting revenue with $264,600. Okay. Uh, Tang accounts for the promised bundle of goods and services as a single performance obligation satisfied over time in accordance with IFRS 15. At the inception of the contract, Tag expects the following transaction price 1.5, expected costs 800,000, expected profit 700,000. The 100,000 bonus constitutes of variable consideration under IFRS 15. At contract inception, Tang excludes the bonus from the transaction price because it cannot conclude that it is highly probable that the significant reversal in the amount of cumulative revenue by uh, recognized will not occur. Completion of the printing machine is highly susceptible to factors outside the entity's influence. This is a contract a contract where Tang satisfied performance obligation over time. Therefore, revenue should also be recognized over time by measuring the progress towards complete satisfaction of that performance obligation. By the end of the first year, the entity has satisfied 65% of 
of its performance obligations on the basis of costs incurred to date. Costs incurred to date are there for 520, 800 times 65%, and TAN reassesses the variable consideration of 100,000 and concludes that the amount is still constrained, which means that it may not yet be recognized. Therefore, as at 31st November 20x5, only the portion of the fixed consideration of 1.5 related to progress to date may be recognized as revenue. This results in revenue of 9.75, which is the 1.5 times the 65 percent. The following amounts will therefore be included in the profit or loss. Credit revenue 9.75, costs 5.20. Gross profit 455. However, on 4th December 20x5, the contract is modified. As a result, the fixed consideration and the expected costs increase by 110 and 60,000 respectively. This increases the fixed consideration to 1610, which is 15 plus the 110. And the expected costs to 860, which is 800 plus 60,000. The total potential consideration after the modification is 1710, which is the 1610 fixed consideration plus the 100,000 completion bonus as Tang has concluded that the receipt of the bonus is highly probable and that including the bonus in the transaction price will not result in a significant revenue in a significant reversal in the amount of cumulative revenue recognized in accordance with IFRS 15. Town also concludes that the contract modification as if it were part of the original contract. Therefore, Tang updates its estimates of cost you, you skipped a line. and revenue as follows. You skipped a line. Tang also, uh, Tang also concludes that the contract remains a single performance obligation. Thus, Tang accounts for the contract modification as if it were part of the original contract. Therefore, Tang updates its estimates of cost and revenue as follows. Tang has satisfied 60.5% of its obligation of its performance obligation 520 actual costs incurred compared to 860 total expected costs the entity recognizes additional revenue of uh, 559550 which is 60.5 of the 1710 minus the 975 revenue recognized to date. At the, mo at the date of modification as a cumulative catch-up adjustment, as the contract amendment took place after the end, the additional revenue will not be treated as an adjusting event after the reporting period. Therefore, it would be accounted for in the year ended 30th November 2006 rather than adjustment, an adjustment in the year ended 30th November 20X5. Mr. Christmas, uh, quick one. Yes. 